Welcome back to the workshop. Uh, some of you I know have uh, seen uh, a short video which I posted uh, briefly on YouTube uh, detailing a problem I had with the stiff movement of the saddle on the new mini lathe. Um, I did the video, posted it on YouTube so that the uh, lathe supplier could um, have a look at what the problem was. Um, it's since been deleted. But uh, this is to show how I overcame the problem, one or two other bits and bobs as well. And um, I'll start off by showing what the problem was. It's a clip from that uh, um, earlier video which I've now deleted. Uh, and then I'll go on to explain how I overcame the problem. Short video to... Yeah try to explain uh, the problem I'm having with the movement of the saddle. Uh, these two bolts which secure the saddle itself to the apron are done up tight. Not excessively so but uh, so sufficient to stop it flopping around and it's very difficult to move the apron as you can see, I'm not, not exaggerating that. Now if I slacken off these bolts, as you can see the apron flops around somewhat. Now there, I've taken out the, um, the slack in the bolts, the apron is now up to the saddle but not secured tightly I can move it more easily it's still not as free as I'd like it to be but uh, like I said tighten those up another well, quarter, quarter, <coughs> quarter turn I can't move oh, no seized up completely. Um, as I said in the email what appears to be happening is the apron is being drawn up and the pinion is binding on the on the rack. Um, I'm prepared to remove the rack, shift it very slightly left or right one way or the other, move it up higher and uh, re-secure it and get more clearance if that's the way around it. Um, not ideal but uh, it will cure the problem. At the moment I can't justify having the apron as slack as that just to, just to obtain the movement I need. there we are. As you can see I've taken off the uh, lead screw guards for the moment. It's uh, um, mainly for my convenience. Um, when I came to investigate the reason why this was jamming up the saddle I found, um, purely by chance I happened to be looking when I engaged the half nuts, that when they engaged they deflected the lead screw about one millimetre towards the lathe bed. Uh, obviously that's not right. The only thing that is constraining the lead screw is, I'm going to swing this round, the um, support block on the end of the lead screw here. That's not the actual one. This is the one that comes with the lathe. It's a metal construction. Just plain metal, no bearing or what have you. And when I slid it off the end and let it waggle about in free air, 
as I engaged the half nut, it shot back one millimeter. Now there's a surprise. So what I did is uh, I drew it up in CAD, 3D printed one of identical dimensions, except I shaved a millimetre off all these dimensions along here. Uh, and that is what you see set on the lathe. Fine, I thought I'll uh, try that again. Um, I did. The problem remained. However, by undoing the two mounting screws uh, and putting some shim in between the apron and the saddle, I found that I could tighten these up to the correct ish torque and the saddle moves quite freely backwards and forwards, no problem. And it also works well with the uh, half nuts engaged and uh, the self act um, working. Um, the shims themselves I made up two, um, naturally enough, <laughs> 3D printed them out of uh, PLA with carbon fibre. Um, and there's an, I think there's an 8mm, uh, 8mm, no, 0.8mm and uh, a 0.6mm. I printed up two, um, two or three different uh, widths um, and the two that I've selected I think are 0 0.8 and 0 0.6 um, and that seems to be working how long they'll last or not uh, I don't know but uh, for the moment they seem to be standing up quite well so quite pleased got that solved, problem solved uh, when I was uh, in contact with the suppliers I asked them to send me a replacement rack and the pinion which drives the, the saddle and backwards and forwards along the lathe bed and uh, they sent me this which is uh, in accordance with the manual for this lathe and coincidentally for the slightly smaller mini lathe as well uh, when I came to put it on it didn't damn well fit this gear is 54 tooth and the one which is on the lathe is 49 teeth um, it's a modulus one and uh, of course I drew it up in CAD again and uh, printed it out in uh, PLA carbon fibre. I've yet to fit that but you can see hopefully the difference in diameter of the two. This one here is the 3D printed one and the one on the right is uh, the metal one. Um, there's hardly any pressure on the on the plastic one so I'm hoping that will last quite well um, and I've yet to hear from the uh, lathe suppliers whether they can get one in metal of the right size but it has been over Easter and it's the first day back at work for them today so uh, let's wait and see on that however I ran the test again on the um, electronic lead screw uh, and if you've been watching previous ones, instead of 10 millimeters travel in the test mode, I was getting about 9.9. Well, I varied 9.91 was the lowest, up to 9.96 millimeters, which I thought was acceptable. However, having given it much thought, I came up with a solution. 
Again, I make reference to an earlier video. When you initially set up the electronic lead screw, of which this is the display, um, hopefully you'll be able to see that without the light from the uh, overhead lighting uh, when I switch it on. Uh, when you initially set it up, you put in all the parameters, uh, including the lead screw uh, thread pitch, uh, the tooth count on the pulley on the end of the lead screw, and the teeth count on the end of the stepper motor, which runs the electronic lead screw. Um, because the lead screw is 1.5mm uh, pitch and the ELS only goes down to 3mm I had to alter the um, pulley tooth count from 20 and 40 to 20 to 80 uh, to get the right ratio now it occurred to me that I wasn't or not au fait with the software and I wasn't sure indeed I haven't asked whether the mathematics within the software is done with integer numbers or floating point so instead of uh, inputting 20 and 80 I just input one tooth and four tooths to get the same uh, ratio. Um, the software writer in states that uh, the num actual number of teeth doesn't matter, it is the ratio between the two which counts. Um, so I've done that and lo and behold I get a much better, more accurate reading which I'll, I'll demonstrate now. Uh, this is I've switched on the electronic lead screw. Um, can you see the screen there? Yeah, you can just, but it's not very clear. <coughs> now then, and it was at that point in the proceedings that the uh, camera battery ran out. Fortunately, I've got a spare, although it's not fully charged. Well, I hope it lasts to the end. So off we go with uh, another test. I'm hoping that you, this will come out all right. You can see the um, ELS is in um, test mode, or it will be when I've selected it. <laughs> test go. The uh, digital dial indicator. Oh, it's not a doll, it's a display indicator. Um, I'll run it up to take the slack out. The saddle's coming up to the indicator. Oh, that helps if you engage the uh, half nuts. So I'll we'll do that again. It's coming up and it's starting to move now. It's taking up the back dash. I'll zero that. Get the right button. So there we are, that's zeroed. Another 10 mil. And with his fingers tightly crossed, we hope it works as I said it would. And there we go, 9.97. The other day I did it. And uh, it gave me 9.99, so I'll just run that back again. You can see there's about 0.9 mil backlash. One more, one more go. Comes the backlash. And it's still zero. Nine 
8.97 well not as good as I was getting but uh, that's good enough for me so there we are that's uh, not one problem solved but uh, I reckon oh look it's jumped up to 9.98 so it's getting even better as I speak <laughs> uh, not just one problem solved but uh, I think two and earlier I I'm true blue Peter mode which uh, UK viewers will understand but not foreign ones I dare, dare say um, here's a bearing block that I made earlier uh, again I 3D printed it but uh, I included all the fancy bits and I've made a bush on the lathe uh, reamed it 8 mil and uh, I shall be fitting that possibly later today or maybe tomorrow so there we are first blood oh and while I've got you here I'll just move the camera over a bit and I've uh, well, I don't know, I know that you'd agree but I've got some, my cables have arrived and uh, they're not as flexible as I'd hoped but I have tidied up the wiring inside the enclosure and again possibly a job for tomorrow will be to mount it on the side of the bench and uh, finish all that and get it tidied away and uh, I think that's about it for now so thanks for your patience and if you have been thanks for watching I'll catch you next time bye for now